You're listening to Podmas, an opportunity to have a festive catch up with some of the fabulous members of the Small and Supercharged Mastermind Group. So welcome to this episode of Podmas. We are again joined by three fabulous masterminders. We have got Kathy, Rachel and Carly. So I'm going to hand over to the ladies and let them introduce themselves, what they do and a bit about their business too. So Rachel, shall we start with you? Yeah, sure. So my name is Rachel and I own and run Little Margate Equestrian um, in Cornwall. So we are um, an equestrian centre with lots of bits and bobs attached to us. Um, We've got a riding school with just under 30 horses. We are also a pony club centre with over 80 members, which is busy but fantastic. We really enjoy it. And we've also just been accredited to become an RDA, so Riding for the Disabled Centre. Um, we've also got a small livery yard attached. And very recently, post-COVID, we have just set up an equine therapeutic centre, which is for children and young adults who are having a tough time. So not much, not much on a few, really. <laughs> Don't ask. Wow. <laughs> you are a busy lady. That is a lot of stuff going on, but lots of horses and lovely things. So yeah, all good stuff. Yeah. Carly, what about you? Tell us all about you and what you do. Um, so I'm a freelance groom, um, riding coach, dog walker, pet sitter. That's sort of my main job. Um, I do also run a side business as a virtual assistant supporting small businesses um with anything that they may need help with so it could be just something simple with um dealing with their social media any admin any emails or anything that they're feeling a bit overwhelmed with they might just need some extra help and I also do my own podcast as well so quite busy as well like Rachel I was gonna say so not much for you either (laughs) oh we've got very busy ladies today all the different things but I think it is variety is the spice of life as they say which yes. moves us on to Kathy, who has got jobs at very different ends of the spectrum. So, Kathy, do tell us about you and all the things you do. <laughs> right. So, I'm based in Nottinghamshire, right down at the very southern tip where it borders Leicestershire and Lincolnshire. I can actually see Beaver Castle from my upstairs windows, which is rather nice. Um, I'm probably best known around here for being the chocolate lady. Um, I run my own uh, very successful chocolate making business. Uh, which I've been doing for 11 and a half years. Um, supply Sat Main, the two star Michelin chef in Nottingham with all his after dinner chocolate. I've been doing that for 10 and a half years. And then I also have a day job as a chartered surveyor specializing in business rates. And I've been doing that for 30 odd years so uh, yeah and I've got a teenage son and um, I also employ my husband now in the chocolate business so uh, life never stops we've got a busy crew today we have got a busy crew um I'd say Kathy's chocolate is absolutely exceptional and if you are listening to this thinking oh I need chocolate in my life go and check out Kathy's chocolate they are delicious so our first question for today and what I'll try and do is I'll point at different people, but I won't just point because you're all in different places on, on different screens, aren't you? So I'll just ask these questions as we go. The first one is, who do you most identify with? Are you more elf or more Grinch? Carly, I'll start with you. Oh, 100% elf. Like, I, I love them. I knew it. I 100% elf. I love the magic of Christmas. Um, it's funny, actually. I was having this conversation with my mum literally a couple of days ago, and um I said like as a child she said you were just you just loved Christmas as a child and she said and you've just continued it through like yeah adulthood and I just love the fact that you know that father Christmas comes and he leaves you gifts and like I love all the decorations I love giving gifts I just love the whole lot oh I love that I mean I I don't I'm well Grinch but I love that (laughs) you are so happy about it it's nice it is nice to see people who really embody Christmas and how excited they are it is infectious I'm just miserable because of all the school crap I've got to manage (laughs) before the end um but that's just me uh Kathy what about you uh probably Grinch because I am just for me this is just such a busy time of year 
Um, I mean, we often, we, we do between a third and half of our annual turnover in November and December. Mm. So it is just so busy. Uh, I usually get to think about Christmas about the 23rd of December. Nice. So, nice. Uh, yeah, I love Christmas, but I kind of don't have time to deal with it. <laughs> Fair enough. At least you've always got chocolate as presents and that, that's well Absolutely. up there. So Absolutely. <laughs> Whatever does it sell gets given as Christmas presents. Too right. That's what we like. And no waste either. So, you know, that's that's good. Absolutely. And what about you, Rachel? Um, so a hundred percent elf. A hundred percent. Um, if I could show the listeners my Christmas nails. Oh my <laughs> Oh, they're amazing. Goodness. Well, we've got, what have we got on this? A snowman, a reindeer, snowflakes, a penguin? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, we do loads. Obviously, we have a lot of Christmas activities coming up for the riding school. Um, we've got groups going to visit reindeers. Father Christmas usually comes and sees us. So, yeah, it is 100% out. Amazing. Now, which product or products or services should people buy from you this Christmas? So obviously you've got quite a diverse range of businesses here, but we'll start with you, Kathy. What have you got that you think people need to crack on and buy from you this year? Uh, well, the pine cones are always a popular one at this time of year. Our solid chocolate pine cones, they're always popular. For the horsey people, we've still got our classic horseshoes and pony shoes that we sculpted using a real horseshoe that the farrier gave us and we created the molds ourselves so they're always a popular gift with the horsey fraternity uh we've also sort of got various doggy shapes as well so we can cater for those with doggy friends um and uh, the christmas trees are really beautiful the christmas trees are absolutely gorgeous so uh yeah i think they're probably the main things that i would say and our mondiots as well they've been they've been good this year almond cranberry and pistachio so quite don't, tasty don't you also do sort of ex i'm gonna call it experience day but i don't mean that but yeah. people can come so if, if they they don't know what kind of chocolate to get and people are a bit more craft not even crafty that's just such the wrong word more I can't think of the word. I'm, I've I've had quite a week. Um, you know they're like doing stuff. Yeah, no, I just experience. Yeah, we have a lot of people come for experiences, workshops, courses, parties. So yeah, people can come for sort of a couple of hours, basic chocolate making. Uh, they can come with a group of friends, which can get quite hilarious, especially when I have sort of vets or nurses or teachers. You know, it can get. Um, exceedingly uh, interesting <laughs> um and uh, yeah and then we do some half day one-to-ones full day one-to-ones for those who really want to get to grips with it and we do children's parties which are hilarious great fun you come bring your kids a couple of hours yes. make lots of chockey uh no gift bags required because they take home all the chocolate they require and we clean up the mess at the end so win-win <laughs> the mess i mean I do cooking with my children and every time I just do basic cooking, I look around the kitchen and think, I'm going to have to redecorate. It's just carnage. <laughs> they are wearing it all. You're, I don't know, you did children's parties. You're a hero. Yeah. Yeah, we could take up to 10 children. So uh, I mean, it does crazy. help that, uh, that, that Mr. Kathy's Chocolates is a former primary school teacher. So he's very good at wrangling them oh, and has God. taught me the teacher voice. So that helps. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know it was it was child friendly as well because oh yeah, Bob, my kids would be so into that. It'd be absolutely terrifying. Um, we do quite nice ones. We sort of mums, grandmas, and daughters and things like that. You know, three oh, generations. That's really yeah, that's cool. always quite a nice one. So there's something for everybody with you. Totally. Definitely. What about you, Rachel? I think for us it would probably be our gift vouchers. Obviously, we're service based more than product based. Um, so we we sell a lot of Christmas gift vouchers for all kinds of things. We do um, amounts of money or for specific experiences or lessons or beach rides or anything at all. Um, so I think that would be that would be our answer for that one. That's really nice, actually, because, as you say, you can do things if, if someone wants to have a lesson 
or um or whatever really they can have that money monetary value against something but equally yeah. if you know someone adores something or it's on their bucket list because things like beach rides do go on people's bucket list don't they as these amazing things to do so you've got yeah. the flexibility there yeah absolutely yeah they are really popular which is great and um, we were especially grateful that they were even flying out during covid as well so oh brilliant and does that come as like a an actual sort of paper voucher in the post I can't speak today yeah we do so we've got an online booking system where um you can actually buy your gift vouchers that way but we try and encourage people to do it so that they get a pretty gift voucher arrive in the post so someone's actually got something to open on Christmas morning yeah love that brilliant and what about you Carly um yeah quite similar to Rachel obviously most of my well all my businesses are service-based so I would probably recommend um for the virtual uh, assistant side of the business again offering like a gift voucher so if you know someone that's probably um who has a small business who you find is constantly working and feeling a bit overwhelmed or is not struggling is probably a bit of a strong a negative word but like feels like they might need a bit of extra help um then they you could purchase one of um so sort of like one of my power hour of uh, gift vouchers so it's not like a committed service but it just gives someone like that an hour where we can talk through things that or um streamline a list, uh, something part of their business or their social media or go through social media ideas if they're feeling like they're in a bit of a funk with their social media um i think that might be a good sort of um helping hand to someone who might be struggling um or feeling a little bit overwhelmed especially around christmas time no, that's brilliant. And with the with your other business as well, do you offer a similar kind of service? If someone, I don't know, if they knew their friend was going to a show, could they pay for you to go and groom at a show with them and give them a hand on the ground? Um, I try, well, because I'm like, I try and keep my area, I'm based in Kent. And so um, my area is quite small <laughs> where I cover now due to the fact of fuel costs, I've had to reduce my area. Um, so if if they are in the Kent area and if they want um, help or anything, then obviously, yes, I could offer that service. Um, but um, I don't actually have much availability for the freelance side of it. I get so booked up through every week, which is great. Um, but obviously, if anyone is in the Kent area and needs, again, um, wants some helping hand or hire out for a show or something, then, yeah, I'll definitely be willing to help great stuff now the next question and you can be as wild as you like with this one but what <laughs> present would you like to see under the tree this year it can be something that's completely fictitious we've had some very crazy ones so far um, or something that's very very practical that you would really really love Rachel can we come to you first if you've got an idea mm -hmm. you have excellent mm -hmm. right go for it so I have got to, I, my first one would be an indoor arena. Nice. Because we have only got an outdoor one and we've spent the last two weeks down in Cornwall in what's felt like a monsoon. Yeah. So an indoor arena would be, would be very much appreciated. Um, and the other one would be a black nose valet sheep. Oh, I know someone that's got one of those. I mean, I love them and I would love to have a couple to join our therapy centre because we've got goats and ducks and hens and miniature ponies and all stuff like that. Do, um, you, know, so, yeah. do you know Hannah Russell? No, I don't think so. I'll send you a, I'll send you an email later. She is um, Little Al from Friends. Oh, I've heard of her. Yeah. And she's got those black nosed sheep. Oh, wow. I'll put yeah. you a message. Email me okay. if you forget. Carly, what about you? Oh, God. Um, when I've been listening to your previous episodes, I've been thinking about this question and I'm thinking, what would I like? I mean, because I don't have my own horse. I would love to have my own horse. I mean, that's quite a big present. Look, she, look, um, Rachel asked for an indoor school. A horse compared to an indoor school <laughs> is like nothing. So you asked for your horse. Um, so I would love to have my own horse and I've always wanted one since I was probably about seven years old and wanted one every Christmas. So maybe one Christmas I will get it. So um, in the meanwhile, I'm busy looking after everyone else's, which is fine. Um, but yeah, maybe one day, one Christmas, I'll have my own. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good one. And what about you, Cathy? Oh, I think two weeks lying in Bali doing absolutely nothing with no no phones no no news 
no no nothing just just lying in the sunshine by a pool hot cold running waiters you know that sort of thing <laughs> just just complete switch off relax um chill out that sounds a good one too now the next question is about your best or worst christmas present you ever had you don't have to do one of each you can just pick one that jumps into your mind i feel like kathy's got one <laughs> have you got um, one I, a, a certain family member has for a number of years knitted hat gluff and scarf sets that have been repurposed to various charities for homeless etc uh <laughs> so uh um best one was it well it's kind of a kind of best and not the best one was when i was 13 and my parents had planned to get me a horse only two days before it failed the vetting so i got up on christmas morning and i'd got rugs and head collars and grooming kit and everything but the horse Ooh. but that was actually good because you know the intention was there and you know that that was a pretty magical christmas did you ever get the horse? I was going to get a horse which i did, did you, a few months later you did get the horse right because otherwise yeah, no, that i got uh, uh, literally in the april four months later but it's kind of nice because then i was involved with the process of choosing her yeah. And I had her for 20 years, so she was she was my heart oh. horse. She was so oh. uh, yeah, oh. yeah. That's a really good one. Um, I mean, the bad one was also good though. Um oh, yeah. <laughs> and you've got to you know play it forward, which is very important. So that's a win. Um, what about you, Rachel? So I don't think I've honestly had an awful one certainly not anything worth writing home about but probably my best one would be a little bit like Kathy um when I was 12 I got my very first very own pony oh. um called Trigger and I had been riding at the local riding school and he had been there um and mum and dad said oh I'm, he he has been sold so I obviously burst into tears and they then turned around and said to us um Aww. so that was that was amazing and that has certainly was the start of the journey to where I am now so I think that would that would be my best one no absolutely that's a great one although when you started speaking I thought you were gonna say I've never had a really good one and I thought amazing <laughs> this is better this is better <laughs> No, no, I have had lots of good ones. I've been very lucky. And what about you, Carly? Um, the one that sort of pops out the most is when I got, um, I, I, I had this leaflet through one of the horse magazines about um, Red Wings adopting a horse. And I had it for like a year. And I like sort of said to like my parents I really really want to adopt one of these horses from Red Wings and stuff and then I got it at Christmas and they sort of done a whole package and I remember it was like a, a burgundy like cover with pictures and um, with information there was like loads of things in this pack and then I can remember carrying this pack with me at school for like the, the oh. whole year so I had it with me oh. and it was a little Shetland pony called Rocky I remember him he was a piebald and um yeah, and I absolutely love that. That's probably like one of my, I mean, I've had lots of amazing presents, but that was the one that sort of sticks out the most. Oh, these are really good ones. <laughs> I mean, I'm slightly disappointed they're so good, but also they're really <laughs> lovely. So, <laughs> oh gosh. What is your favourite festive drink is our next question. Carly, have you got one? I mean, I'm not like a massive drinker, but like if, if it's like Christmas Day and stuff, we are really like um, fruit vodkas. So okay. there's like um, like raspberry vodkas or um, sh like strawberries or anything like that with just a bit of lemonade um, because they go down way too quickly because obviously they just taste like fruity water to me. Um, so, yeah, so they're probably like one of my favourite drinks. Fair enough. What about you, Cathy? I do like a nice glass of mulled wine at this time of year definitely it is it is seasonal um otherwise it's sort of something bubbly sparkly yeah yeah excellent choices what about you Rachel I'm a little bit the same as Carly I'm not a massive drinker but it would be uh there's a really nice gin strawberry and lime gin 
um, that is really nice if you put kind of frozen berries that you get for smoothies and stuff in. But if it wasn't an alcoholic drink, I think it would have to be a hot chocolate from the Hotel Chocolat Velvetizers that they do because it you can't beat them. It is literally chocolate, isn't it? That's kind of whizzed mm -hmm. around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Although we do know someone who does very good sticks of chocolate that you can wiggle yes. around in hot milk and it's um pretty special <laughs> maybe i'll have to try one of those i think you might <laughs> um excellent now what is the best part of a christmas lunch um kathy let's go to you first oh oh that's a that's a good one um i actually really like the pigs in blankets yeah classic red sauce the accompaniments actually i think yeah no I, I I'm a massive bread sauce fan I think that is exceptional stuff and my mother-in-law makes it she's probably listening to this hey Chris um it's so thick you could also plaster walls with it but it's definitely that's that's the joy if it was thin it yeah. wouldn't work no no it has to like plop off the spoon doesn't it yeah. totally it's exceptional I'm, I'm feeling quite excited by that now just thinking about bread <laughs> sauce but pigs and blankets is also a strong option what about you Rachel 100% the bread sauce oh bread sauce for 100% but also the Yorkshire puddings yes we have that I know it's not traditional we have Yorkshire puddings too <laughs> you can't yeah. beat all the stuff all the stuff Oh, I'm getting really hungry now. It's not even lunchtime. Just thinking of all this stuff. Um, what about you, Carly? Um, oh, I hate to say it, but I love it all. I couldn't just pick one thing. I just love Christmas dinner. And I know it's just a glorified roast dinner, but I just absolutely love it. It just I think it tastes different on Christmas Day, even though you got the, you know, the roast potatoes, the veg and everything else. But it just tastes different on Christmas Day. And um, yeah, I, I can't pick one particular thing because like you, I'm just salivating just thinking <laughs> about it now. <laughs> you actually have a bit. No, I know what you mean. I think it is. I think the whole thing with Christmas, I mean, I love a roast dinner as well. But I think with Christmas, you get everyone together and uh, everyone does come together. And also it's just overindulgence, isn't it? There's more, yeah. you know, you don't normally have like, carrots done in two different ways or three different ways or you don't normally have pigs in blankets I don't normally have pigs in blankets with a roast dinner maybe I should or you know nice st or stuffing you don't normally have all of the stuff yeah 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 very mm. nice looking forward to that <laughs> um okay now we're moving on to the question round right um, I love your face as you just said that. <laughs> it's going to be fine. So could you all please think of your buzzer noise? Because we're going to have nine questions. There may be one where everyone can have a guess. Um, Possibly, I can't remember what number that is. That might be this afternoon's round. Um, Anyway, think of a buzzer noise. Rachel, do you have one? Um, Nay. Nay. Nay's a strong option. Well, okay, so you are nay. Um, Carly, what's your buzzer noise? I'm going to go jingle bells. Oh, nice. Nice. I like that. And Kathy, what's yours? Uh, ding dong. Okay, I have instantly forgotten all of those, but it's going to be <laughs> fine. So I'm going to keep an eye on the situation. Right, I've got a little score sheet down now. Okay, your first question. There's no, actually, just to be clear, there's no prizes. It's just the glory of the winning. Um, okay. <laughs> Which popular Christmas beverage is called milk punch? Jingle bells. Oh, Carly. Is it eggnog? It is eggnog. <laughs> well done. The next oh. question. In Home Alone, where did the McAllisters go on holiday when they left Kevin behind? Jingle bells. Yes. Paris. Yes. Jesus. Ka Carly's on fire. <laughs> I'm getting competitive now. <laughs> oh, no, I'm excited. Now this one, so what time is the King's speech, which obviously previously was the Queen's speech, usually broadcast on Christmas Day? Nay. Nay. Nay had it just. Rachel. Is, uh, is it three o'clock? That's what my records say. The next question. Who plays Juliet in Love Actually? Jingle Bells. Yes. Is it Keira Knightley? It is. 
You can tell I've seen that film way too many times. <laughs> I like that film. Which animated Christmas film released in 1982 is just 27 minutes long? Ding dong. Nay. Ding dong has it. The snowman? Yes. Well done, Kathy. Oh, okay. Which Christmas decoration was originally made from strands of silver? Ding dong. Nay. <laughs> Ding dong has it. Tinsel. Yes. Oh, three. Okay, we've got three more questions, but you're getting quite close now. Oh, now this is one you can all guess at. When was the first Christmas card sent? So what, you can all have a guess at this, and obviously the closest one will win. Rachel, what are you thinking? I am absolutely useless at years and times. So, oh, God, I have no idea. Have a random guess. Mm. 1868. Okay. Kathy, what are you going for? I was going a bit earlier. I'll go 1843. Okay. And Carly, what are you going for? Well, yeah, I was thinking Victorian times. Um, so I'm going to go in the middle of the guys and I'm going to say 1854. Kathy is spot on. <gasps> According to my records, my note is 1843. Well done. There's obviously one of those little facts I've obviously just retained. <laughs> I am impressed. <laughs> I am very impressed. Next question. What country has the most reindeer? Ding dong. Yes. Finland? Not according to my research. Does anyone else want to go in and steal the question? Mm, I'm going to go, yeah, or Iceland. Who said Norway? Rachel. Me. See, my notes say southern Norway, but that's not really a country, is it? The country would be Norway. Mm, I think I got that one. I'm thinking I have that. <laughs> yeah. Right, and our last question. This is another one we can all contribute towards. How many mince pies are eaten in the UK every year? Oh, God. Who wants to have the first stab at that? This is an important question. It's the last one, but this could decide the winner. Five million? You're going five million. Okay, who else would like a stab at this? Um, I'm just thinking, how many people in the UK? How many people? How many? Are, I'm going to say eight million. Eight? Yeah, I'm going to go extreme and say eight. I'm kind of doubting my numbers now. Okay, Rachel, what are you going? I am going to go a little bit lower than that and say two million. Yeah, I mean, I've got 800 million written down. Oh my God. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am now a little bit concerned that that might not be the case. But then I was thinking, oh, there's 60 odd million people in the UK. Yeah. My husband eats them all the time, so yeah. he eats my share as well. It wouldn't be surprising. Well, let, I mean, it, we, we are going with the facts I have written down. So, Carly, you, you've you actually won we'll that point it. and the whole quiz. Oh, um, God. Carly oh, that got, was very close, though, surely. Yeah, very Carly close. got eight, Kathy got three, and Rachel got two. So it could have gone any way with the mince pie question, but it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> So, team, thank you very, very much for that um, for that Podmas. If we go around all of you and you can tell us all the places where we can find you online, so your website and your social media handles, that would be awesome. So, Kathy, let's start with you. Okay, so website is all the W's. Kathy is chocolatesandcakes.co.uk. Uh, same on Facebook. Kathy's Chocolates on Instagram. And they're the main places you can find us. Brilliant, thank you. And Rachel, what about you? Okay, so the website is www.littlemargateequestrian.com and we are Little Margate Equestrian on Instagram and Facebook. We've also got um, an LME Therapy Ponies and Friends page on Facebook and Instagram as well. Awesome. And what about you, Carly? Um, so for my freelance groom side, 
business. It's Cobbs Equine Services, which is on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, my virtual assistant side of the business is on Facebook. It's Cobbs Executive Virtual Assistant. And on Instagram, it's Cobbs.Eva. And then my podcast is called It's a Groom's Life, if you want to have a listen. Amazing. Thank you very much for joining me today, ladies. That's been brilliant. If you'd like to find out more about any of the masterminders, do contact them as per their chat. And if you'd like to find more out about Mastermind, the amazing community that also helps to educate and empower all of you fabulous small business owners, head on over to riafreemanpr.co.uk and then look at Small and Supercharged Mastermind from the top menu. Have a good one. Take care.